during a workshop on children in Ottoman Empire at Istanbul's Kemerburgas University. Sivinet talked with Professor Nazan Maksuten, who has been researching children in Ottoman Empire. Nazan talked about her great-grandmother Antram's journey from her village of Chingilar, placing her family's personal history in the wider context of those who survived the genocide. What we know from other survivors from Chengilar and the Ottoman archival records is that so they started from this Chengilar and then went to Bursa first and then to Eskişehir uh, and then to Konya and then to Adana and then to Aleppo and then to Derzor. And so I try to calculate the kilometers, you know, how they did it, etc. Uh, it's hard to tell, but somebody from Sivas, for instance, reached Derzor in seven months, a survivor tells that. Well, Sivas and Bursa are like really different things, so I can't tell, I'm not sure, maybe it took a year for her to reach there. I, I mean, I don't know about these details, but it looks like it's about a thousand and five hundred kilometers long way. And I mean, she used to tell that she walked all the way. And we know that only a little people use trains, most of them walk, so probably she really walked all the way. In the beginning she had her little brother, that I could not learn the name of, and her mother. So they disguised the little boy as a girl, assuming that she, he, he, she would survive. And then uh, short after the journey, the soldiers realize that there's something weird about this boy and then they check it and it turns out that it's a covered head but it's a boy and so they kill him to actually to punish the mother and the sister because I mean little children were usually allowed to take, make the road but since they disguised the boy they wanted to punish the family uh, but then the after he died, this was just Antaram and her mother Mariam. And but Mariam passed away quickly after the uh, after her son's death, and so Antaram after that was without family. But I assume she was with other people from Chengilar, from her village. So this is actually what we know. I mean, she wasn't with uh, intimate family for a long time. She was married in Basra before coming to Istanbul. The guy, I mean, the, with with another survivor, they came to Istanbul because she has a brother here who had a butcher shop. They became partners in this butcher shop and they lived their lives mainly as butchers. I mean, she was also. I mean, butcher being a butcher is a manly job in Turkey usually, but she was also behind the uh, the bar. I mean, she was also doing the thing. Um, she was a very strong person. I mean, she was definitely the head of the household. I mean, everybody listened to what she says. Nobody could do anything she says no. The, my great-grandfather was a really vague person. I mean, he did not any say about anything. He was like pushed and pulled all the time by her. Um, she used very bad language, but she was really funny, you know, swearing to everything, but in a funny way. Um, she was this like, you know, butch kind of personality, but uh, full of laughter as well. I mean, she wasn't sad, she wasn't telling sad stories, but she liked music a lot. And when there was music going on, she played the oud. When she was playing something, at that moment she became more sentimental, cried sometimes. Um, so she had two daughters um, and four great-grandchildren uh, gra and then other four great-grandchildren. So I'm one of those like, great-grandchildren she could see. She has seen me, my sister and another cousin before she passed. Um, some things she was telling all the time and repeatedly. My father was telling that she told, I mean, she said uh, many times about how her own mother broke the jars uh, in their cellar. You know, when they were told to leave the house, the mom w goes down to cellar and broke all 
the jams and marmalades and pickles, you know, just ruins all the food they have. Not to leave anything back for the military. So she used to tell this over and over again, both to say that you need to uh, have a real seller, you know, because anytime there could be a famine or something, but also it's for you, it's not for other people, something like that. She also always said, I mean, I walked from Bursa, I walked from Bursa, you know, like underlining the distance, the distance, but um, she wasn't telling much about her suffering how she herself was hungry, how she was without shelter, how she suffered from abuse, you know, kidnapped, I mean, subjugated, we don't know. Well, I've read a lot of survivor stories and they are very similar in a sense. I mean, they are similar both because these people had some sort of conversation between them and also there were a number of options they could choose so it's similar so in that sense i tried to put this into context you know what was about uh, adopted into a muslim house what was the life in an orphanage how was it in a refugee camp i was trying to understand the general picture but still i mean it's a personal story it's somebody i know and it's somebody I know to be very strong and very lively, etc. So in that sense, it's, uh, I have maybe uh, an understanding of surviving as being strong, but it's not necessarily so. But it's my personal experience that makes it understand it as such. Uh, I think it's difficult and it can be criticized as being too subjective, but I think uh, history is a story you have to be subjective and as a personal issue I enjoyed researching it and I liked writing it.